Hey guys, this is Orban Gaming. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. So, guys, today we have a pretty interesting and pretty awesome clan boss team that I have built for the first time on the 11th Ravens account. So, thank you for letting me letting me showcase this. Uh, basically, I was you know I was asked, okay, let's have let's have a look what can we do for a clan boss team on on this account to be able to at least at least. Uh, three kill tonight if possible and you know if you have a look at the, uh, the champions that we have we obviously have a Chris, we have a geomancer skull crusher toragi tatura so we have the possibility of building on um, uh, a killable comp basically a defensive comp since we don't have any easy unkillable options so i said okay since we have Chris and he's a monster for clan boss alongside the other ones let's see what we can build so the team that i actually built was the team uh, created, I'm not exactly 100% sure if it was one or both of them, but it's called the Endless Buff Krisk 2 to 1, which is basically this one. So this team, which uh, has the team running 2 to 1 ratio, was created by Devil Jedi of Scratch, like, uh, together, uh, I didn't really exactly look exa uh, like who's donor, but you know, I'm predicting them, it's not something I created. And this team basically runs the two extenders, like block debuff, increase defense, you know, any, any of the other buffs, and we're having the two extenders, Krisk and Sandlashed, uh, it basically has as if you see we have all the buffs on almost all the time So uh, I took this comp obviously and I adapted it to to our uh, To our situation our account and it turned out to be something like This team so it was Krisk Tatura instead of Sepulchre Sentinel because why not? Gotzi Karaniri for the extends and the heals Geomancer for the damage and I tried the difference between Skullcrush and Toragi. I'm just gonna show you like this. I tested both, Toragi is better, but I'm gonna show you roughly <clears throat> how it looked at Skullcrusher. So let me see, because I have the video in here. So Skullcrusher, same, it's, it can be put full auto with the presets. And basically the final result is like we start, see we start getting low, start dying. And the final result was 39, 39.3 million damage basically. 50 million from Geomancer, 4 million from Kresk, the Skull Crusher 7 Datura, 8.4 from Godseeker. So, this is the one with Skull Crusher, like I said. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put myself. Actually, I can leave myself in the corner because I'm gonna come back. I will play in the background. I will play the run with uh, <clears throat> Toragi instead of Skull Crusher. And I will be back. We're gonna talk about the damage, we're gonna talk about the outcome, the builds, the speeds, and everything. So, See you in a bit, guys. Look at this insanity. Look at the difference. Before we barely had 40 million damage and now we have 58.1 million damage. 
To be fair, I have also done some other things to this team because when it comes to killable teams, it all depends on the rotation, guys. Like, it all depends on it, uh, how your rotations look, how the champions look, you know, every single thing. And basically what I've done is, let me see, because I have, you know, the <laughs> optimizer all this here. So what I've done, I kept tweaking what's the opener of this skill, what's the opener of that one, what's what should be priority, what should be used. And this is exactly the way that I managed to find it to work, which is the Krisk, the same as the basic one that they had, which is like uh, open with the A2, delay the A3. Nothing for Godseeker. Tatura, I have. Actually, let me just show you the openers here because it, it's easier. I cannot go to Clan Boss because we already used both the keys for testing out. But basically, these are the presets. Let me show you the presets. So, Geomancer A3, A2. You want this to be able to take the increased attack because with this team, you will always attack on Affinity because of Geomancer's passive, which is going to do a lot of damage plus the poisons from, from uh, Toragi. So, Geomancer A3, A2. Krisk, open with the A2, then prioritize A1, and then second priority the A2. Toragi, do not use the A2, and open with the A1. Tatura, open with the A1, then the A3, then the A2. Like, from what I tested, this is the best rotation, so that we have the perfect veils, which also gives us damage mitigation at the right time, plus the shield on Tatura as well. So basically, this one always lands, and Tatura... Having perfect veil on everybody for the stun, Tatura will always be the stun target. So every other stun, Tatura will also place a shield on her on herself or himself, like itself, whatever. So Tatura is going to be really, really helpful with this one. Plus bringing the block debuffs and increased defense on two-turn cooldown makes it amazing. So having this one, the the A3 as a priority because it's on a four-turn cooldown helped us uh, helped out more, so we survived more. Like I said, Godseeker, nothing. Tatura, Toragi. So these, this, this is the preset. Now let's have a look at the build. Uh, obviously this, because we did 58 million on Ultra Nightmare, obviously it's gonna work the, the same thing on Nightmare. Because of the presets also, this team is full auto. It's full auto from the start. Let me move myself a little bit to the side so we have a look at the builds. So Kresk, uh, I have in Stalwart and Perception. These are the stats. So I tried to get a little bit of crit rate, but not as important. The way that this team was focused is to survive as many turns and that way Geomancer is passive and Toragi's poisons will do most of the damage. As you saw, the main damage dealers were the two. So I put I put Chris at 240 speed. It can be from 239 to about I think 243. Obviously, if you want to do this exact same uh, this exact team and you cannot hit the right speeds, just put them in the calculator or like go to the with Jedi's, go to the endless buff team and you know put your champions, put your teams and try to tweak it, see up until it works for you. Like this what these were not the exact speeds that the endless buff had. I just put the speeds that I had, and it still worked. So, you know, you can, you can tweak this. Go high, go low. Like, if you go like this, for example, Krisk, if you go lower, C doesn't work. If you go higher, it works up until you get to this point. So, it's like, you know, check the range, Js, check the ranges, but these ranges sometimes depend on each other speed. So, maybe Krisk at 239 works, but maybe, uh, or like 240 works. If you drop in 239, but maybe you increase the speed of Godseeker, it might not work. So, always check the optimizer and see how it works for you guys. <clears throat> So, uh, this is Chris, Chris's build. I got, obviously, Chris can go with accuracy as well because of the passive. This is what you care a lot. Brings a decreased defense. So, because we all don't only have a Geomancer with a weak and an HP burn, we have the decreased defense from Chris. This is huge because we do more damage from War Masters and from every hit that we do. It's a lot of, of damage. Plus, also the decreased attack that has a chance to land. Like, every time he's hit, there's a 100% chance it lands unless it's 3%. What I did in order to maximize this as well is I didn't take Krisk down the defense tree. I took him down the support tree so I can get the Master Hexer. This one has a chance to extend the, those debuffs. Like they decrease attack or decrease defense. If, it, if it's placed for two turns, this is awesome. And uh, the good thing about it, this is like especially since we hit affin Affinity. Like I think, I think it takes into consideration that it gets four hits. And because it gets four hits, it's four times that this one procs. So it's higher chance to to, play, to land it for two turns, it's like especially on the first AOE. So I, I think that's 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 like logically this is how it works. I I'm not guaranteeing it. That's just how I think about it. Anyway, rambled enough about Chris. Let's move along. Tatura, the the next champion, 269 speed. Uh, I made Tatura with like the accuracy is not on purpose. It just happened to be like this. I tried to make Tatura to do damage. Honestly, after thinking about it and. Uh, 
testing it out and as you've seen how how we died tatura dying first i think it would be better if we got tatura to be in stalwart as well and just have like the same as much defense as possible because obviously the the higher hp the faster it does uh, uh she dies on the stun so i would i would put tatura in stalwart as well survivability and i'm quite sure this team would have a chance to one kill tonight man uh, masteries for Tatura, obviously the defensive match, the offense, and then the defensive ones, like these two ones at the end that don't really matter, but there's nothing else to help, so might as well put put those ones. Godseeker and Niri. Godseeker, because she's the only one that heals in this team, apart from having, you know, the life drinkers and war master, I decided to take her the support tree, take the steadfast and the healing ones at least. Take the healing savior and the lay on hands. And uh, I wanted to, the reason why I took it down this route because it was hard for me to hit the speed so having nerve steel helped me to build that in stalwart as well and hit the speeds like i said uh on the run with skull crusher she was not in stalwart she died faster so i was like you know what build that in stalwart got her to to be survivable again and you saw the result it was totally worth it geomancer stalwart again 227 speed 243 accuracy because obviously we need accuracy a little bit of crit rate that we could and again survivable like as you see it's not the best stalwart that we have we even had I even have like an attack percent chest on on him but it's still it works what again offensive masteries and then defensive ones like the defensive ones especially for the blast proof and for the delay delay death these are the really good ones if you want to make them survive like for geomaster it doesn't help us to take in the support so you don't want the master hexer <clears throat> because it's on a three turn cooldown anyway his skills and it can, it's not like the poisons like you you can place more of them you just place one and that's it so it's no point to try and extend or whatever because this team basically goes on a two to one ratio so that's the reality of this one and then the last one let me show you skull crusher's masteries if you if anybody's interested this is what i have for skull crusher but like i mentioned he's not the main one in this team and then toragi the surprise honestly for me so these are the masteries for toragi i took the offense one and then the support tree again the reason why i took the support tree is i, I cared about sniper and I cared about Master Hexer. So obviously I cared about this for a chance to extend and a higher chance to land the decrease attack on the A1. With this type of teams, of killable teams, if you do not land the decrease attack, you runs over. Like one decrease attack not landed before a, before an AOE can mean the difference between you surviving another five turns or you, you just dying. And again, uh, obviously, obviously everybody used this fully booked in this team. Uh, Toragi's build is the same in Stalwart, 196 speed, like it's the minimum I think is 195 that you need, so 196 speed, I managed to put 100% crit rate, why not, the accuracy to land, to land his debuffs and survivability again, high HP, uh, high defense, especially the uh, Toragi and Krisk need to have especially high uh, HP because of the fact they, have, they are the ally protectors and they, they protect the, everybody else, which is huge. But yeah, let me move myself down because I was floating. This is it for the video today, guys. This was a really interesting team. Obviously, it's like, you know, it's not free to play friendly. You need the Krisk to do this specific one. But if you have the Krisk and you have certain champions like this, like I tried, do it. It's it's an insane team. It can be an easy to kill to Nightmare with the right champions. Like, for example, maybe in case of a Geomancer, if I had a Draco. And uh, yeah, so in case you must survive the Draco and instead of Toragi, I use the Skull Crusher, that could be a one, one key team because that's the that's the key that uh, sc Scratch and Devil Jedi showcased with, with this specific comment did like 100 million damage. But anyway, this was it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you all in the next one. Peace, love, take care, everyone. Bye.